we are consuming resources much faster than the planet can regenerate them, so we are going to have to look at uh, living in ways which mean we use these resources much more efficiently. And we have an increasingly urbanised population consuming more. So these are some of the problems that we're going to have to face up to in the next few years. If we're going to build new homes, they're going to be there for 50 years or more. Uh, and, and so we need to set things up sustainably now so that we're being resource efficient for the future. And it's not just about the environment, it's about saving money, it's about a better quality of life. The way people live in, in most ordinary homes is actually quite unsustainable. They have homes which consume a lot of energy. It's not easy for them to live without a car. It's not easy necessarily for them to recycle. So at BedZ we've tried to make the green choice the easy choice. We've got very energy efficient homes. Um, so you just live in them as a normal home, but your carbon footprint is reduced. Although we thought you've got to save energy in the buildings, it was as much about the choices and decisions we make every day, choosing to walk to the shops instead of jumping in the car, using renewable energy. It's, it's just about not being wasteful. When we started working on BEDZ back in 1997, sustainability was much more of an uh, enthusiast fringe activity and now it's really mainstream. Everybody understands their carbon footprints knows they need to do something about it. When we started this project, it was unusual. So, for example, this was the first zero carbon uh, development proposed in the UK, um, but now, in fact, it's become government policy, and large numbers of companies now are starting to look at all sorts of green technologies. Governments are looking at uh, policies which will support this sort of development. Sometimes you hear what ministers say and you have to almost pinch yourself, which is fantastic. I think what we need to do now is really deliver in scale though, you know, there's lots of talk, lots of policies, what we've really got to do now is really tackle this mainstream. We now know that if everyone on earth consumed as much as the average European for example, we would need three planets worth of resources to support us. So what we need to do is create places where it's easy for people to lead a one planet lifestyle. And sustainable communities can play an important part of that because a lot of our impacts are in the energy use in the home and, and the way we lead our lives. As we finished BEDZ we were looking at how to communicate the lessons from BEDZ and that's how the concept of One Planet Living was developed and alongside it ten guiding principles of sustainability which go from very hard sustainability principles like zero carbon and zero waste uh, through to softer ones like promoting health and happiness and equity and fair trade. And this framework and set of principles have been used in the One Planet Communities Network, which is a network of developers around the world who are applying the principles to create sustainable communities. So the monitoring from this project and some of the ideas from it have helped us set up a property development company, which is building zero carbon homes in Brighton and Middlesbrough, for example. It's also helped inspire communities all around the world from cities in the Middle East like uh, Mazda City through to Australia, China, Sonoma Mountain Village in California for example. So it's been very important in terms of spreading this message globally. Uh -huh.